<laughs> I just created this blissful piece of paradise for my wife, Nisha. But things didn't always look this way. This balcony is honestly a little bit depressing. In total, it's around seven square meters and is currently just a home to a small square dining table and four stackable chairs that we picked up when we first arrived here in Vancouver. Despite using it several times last summer, I have to say that this furniture has just been a bit of an afterthought compared to the rest of our home, as outdoor spaces are not really something that I've ever actually had the luxury of designing before. So now that we're settled and I have a better idea of what we both like and need, it's time to give this space the attention that it really deserves. Now from our whole two bedroom apartment, this balcony is the one area that my wife Nisha hates the most because it's just not comfortable to be in. And seeing as she's now a hardworking mum and I've stolen the only spare room that we have in our apartment for my YouTube setup, making Nisha her own little tranquil escape is the least I can do for her. But seeing as I only have just a few days left before summer seems to arrive, I need to get this done pronto if she's ever going to be able to make the most of this space. When browsing compact balcony setups online, to my surprise, there aren't really that many truly beautiful examples to draw inspiration from, and in most places, it does seem that balconies like this become quite literally wasted space. And when looking around our own neighborhood, it does seem like I'm not the only one treating our balcony like an afterthought. This is kind of crazy, as with our apartment, our balcony accounts for an additional 12% floor area that we pay for but simply don't use, which is a massive waste when you think about it. Back when we first moved in, the plan was to turn this into a romantic spot for my wife and I to have meals together, but now that we're parents, having meals like that on a balcony like this kind of doesn't work and all Nisha has found herself wanting is a quiet spot to get outside and enjoy her coffee. If this balcony is ever to become truly cozy, I first knew that I had to deal with our rough floor in making it comfortable enough to walk on barefoot. And seeing as we'll never have the luxury of having a real garden up here, click tile decking and artificial grass seem to be a really affordable option that's a renter friendly way to cover up our rough floor. And I'm hoping that a little bit of green should at least trick our subconscious into there being a little bit of life outside of our doorstep. I then needed to figure out a good place for sitting, where again, as renters, modular sofas seem to be a great choice, as they can change configurations to suit new layouts should we ever move. And by positioning a modular sofa away from the handrails, it can stay somewhat sheltered from the elements and avoid becoming a climbing risk for our young daughter. As Nisha is at her job for the next two days, with the help of her brother Chris, I managed to pick up everything that we needed and somehow fit it all in his car, whilst taking the delivery of all the other furniture that I ordered the following day. And left with a mountain of boxes and cardboard to deal with, I had to get this installed as quickly as possible to avoid this whole project having the absolute opposite effect on my wife that I originally intended. Fortunately, I discovered that the click tile decking that we picked up from Ikea clicks really easily together, and it can be cut around things like handrails using just a dollar store handsaw and a little bit of elbow grease. And because this decking is made entirely of plastic rather than wood, it's also moppable, it requires no maintenance, and it doesn't pose the risk of buckling due to our fluctuating wet climate here in Vancouver albeit being not quite as nice as wood close up. Which is a sacrifice that I'm willing to make because unlike how some designers may put their own grand visions above their clients' actual needs, I actually have to live with this. With this installed, the balcony already looks way more inviting, but I wasn't done working here, as I still had to put together the two outdoor storage boxes that I picked up at Ikea, which I'm going to reappropriate as planters, as it's crazy how expensive planters can get online. Thankfully, these boxes went together super quickly, and for seating, Article, who are actually a local Vancouver-based company sponsoring this video, hooked me up with exactly what I needed, where their modular Kezia sofa in Whale Grey came pretty much fully assembled. 
Because this sofa is made up of three separate lightweight modules, we can reconfigure its layout or add to it whenever we want to, which means that it can grow or shrink should we ever move, and I love that the integrated acacia wood side table provides the perfect spot for Nisha to place her coffee. As I'm a big fan of multifunctional furniture and we don't really have the space for a proper coffee table, I decided to go with articles Selena Terrazzo Stool and Redondo Poof instead, which has the flexibility of serving as a footrest or additional seating, or even as an additional spot for food or drink when paired with a tray, whilst also having the durability that's required for being outdoors. And when the weather gets bad, it's light enough to quickly pick up and throw on the sofa, which can then be covered with their massive sofa cover to keep everything dry. And when it's not in use, it can conveniently hide away inside the planter boxes or underneath the sofa. Last year, Article actually hooked us up with pretty much all of the furniture in our apartment, and on top of this new outdoor furniture, they also hooked us up with a few new pieces that we were missing. And I simply cannot wait to give you all an updated tour later this year. But finally, for the final touches to this balcony, I moved in the artificial bamboo plants that I picked up, which mask the rather sterile frosted glass backdrop, which separates us from our neighbor's balcony and also adds a little bit of life to the space. With that taken care of, all that was left to do was the lighting, and in an ideal world, I'd love to attach string lights to the railings. But seeing as everyone seems to do this, and we're not actually allowed to attach anything to the outsides of our apartments as part of the lease, and along with the fact that I don't really want to have to deal with plugs being left on outside, I ordered these solar up lights to hide inside the planter boxes as a bit of a workaround, which hopefully should do a great job of providing a cozy glow during those warm summer nights. And then along with a few final touches like a rechargeable lantern, some cushions and a lightweight throw, it's finally ready to reveal to Nisha. All right, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> This space honestly just turned out so much better than I expected, and in hindsight, I can't believe how often balconies like this just go completely neglected. I think outdoor spaces are often forgotten as they can be seen as just one more expensive room to furnish that aren't actually a part of your home. However, as this is quite literally a space that you're paying to use, it's almost completely irrational to leave it underutilized like we had. And aside from balconies being a potentially really cosy place to unwind and get some air, I also love that we managed to fit in some hidden storage underneath the sofas to help augment our apartment. And should we ever move, we also have the ability to easily pack all of this away, including the decking, whenever we outgrow our apartment. But the biggest surprise from this whole makeover was these solar uplights, as this balcony has become somewhere that we're truly excited to start using in the evenings, as these lights are completely maintenance free, using absolutely no power and turning on and off themselves with the setting and rising of the sun, which makes them quite literally the definition of set it and forget it. And despite our artificial plants and grass being far from the real thing, the grass still gives me that same inclination to go and sit on it, which is something that I wouldn't have dreamed of doing on our rough balcony floor just a week ago. So, what do you think? Honestly, it's more than I could imagine. Can't find me, you know where I'll be. <laughs> <laughs>